Welcome back. I got a little soundproofing, so maybe my sound quality will improve. We'll see. Often on this channel, I have talked about Huna. I love Huna from the ancient Hawaii, how it was taught, how it was passed down, and that information, a lot of it was given to me by Tad James. I absolutely adore it. And I've had students ask me, would you talk a little bit more about Huna or where can I start reading about Huna? A really great place to begin is a wonderful book by Max Freedom Long. It's called The Secret Science Behind Miracles. So that's the first book that I would recommend. The two books on Huna that Tad wrote were The Lost Secrets of Ancient Hawaiian Huna. And those books are really hard to get now. It's out of print. It's been out of print for quite some time. And so the price, if you find it on a bookseller, is astronomical. It's a crazy price. But I have them. And in his first book, he has a consolidation of Huna by a, a very, very powerful Kahuna who she was born in Hawaii. She grew up in Hawaii. She was trained by her family in the shamanic system of Huna. And Tad loved Huna and he would teach Huna. And then he would find Hawaiians who, who would just come to him and they would give him this huge training or this huge uh, piece of information that came from their family. They wanted to keep their family tradition alive somehow. And so they gave it to Tad and then Tad would turn around and teach it in his classes. It was really beautiful and I totally understand it now because people just come to me and give me beautiful pieces of yogic knowledge. It's just amazing. And so that's what was happening to Tad. And he was handed this entire encapsulation of Huna by this woman. And I want to share that with you today. So let's get into it. This was from Teno Sans Kamali. She was a kahuna who was born in Hawaii, trained in Hawaii, and lived much of her life in New York City and died in 1980. And although we never met her, we have been greatly influenced by her work. We received her teachings directly from one of her students and include them here because of the simplicity and the beauty of the philosophy. So it's, it's a really wonderful place to start with Huna because it kind of encapsulates a lot of their philosophy. Of course, it gets really, really deep and it seems really simple, but it's quite profound and that's what we love, right? We love simple and profound and workable. And so this is a, a great place to start with Huna. And this is what she wrote. Why are we here? The universe requires form to experience the form. Every form of life has a strong urge to choose positively for itself, to maintain itself and its species. We are experiencing that experience of form right now. The highest form of experience is consciousness of self. The purpose of incarnation is to experience ourselves joyously, to experience the source within. Attention and having what you want. You deserve the best of everything. It's yours and it can't be kept from you unless you're blocking it. To get the very best in life, be the very best. What you get is what you believe you're entitled to. You can have anything you want, but there is a payment. You have to pay attention. What is pain? It is communication which has not been attended to. You only pay for non-attention with pain. This means you will want to give up denial. <laughs> it is possible to communicate directly with any part of the body. That's the subconscious, isn't it? The parts need to be communicated with so they know they have your attention. In your health, you can be motivated by a carrot or a stick. <laughs> The carrot is usually better. <laughs> when you get results, give thanks. Thank the mana. 
Thank the mana above. The lower self, the unconscious mind. The body of the lower self is like a fishnet. It catches programs, complexes, and fixations like fish. Our memories are stored with positive and negative energies. Stored energies in the lower self connect with other similar energies and they start to make a dam. Dams are stuck spots, blockages. We draw to us two kinds of energies, those that joyously evolve us and those that make us pay attention to where the stuck spots are. The fishnet is like a magnet for our karma. When you resist something, that resistance automatically attaches you to that which you resist through an aka cord, they call it, an energy attachment. It's your subconscious reaching out and attaching to it. If there is no forgiveness, when there is no forgiveness, you bind the other person to you. You hear that? When there is no forgiveness, you bind the other person to you. In the same way, by guilt and resentment, if you feel like a victim, you are probably victimizing someone. If you feel like you are being manipulated, you are probably manipulating. People who take undue responsibility for other people's lives may be avoiding taking responsibility for their own. What to do? Release, weed out negatives. Seed in positives. First, make a connection with the lower self. Oh my God, third training, right? Talking to the higher self. First, what do we do first? We connect down, right? First, make a connection with the lower self. Then later, the higher self. Here it is, it's right there, that's the formula. Go down, then go up. That's the way it works. Begin by forgiving people. Ask your lower self to bring to your attention people to forgive. Then say, I forgive you. Then experience their forgiveness. Be sure the forgiveness goes both ways. And you can do that internally. You can do it externally. You don't have to fight for somebody's forgiveness, but the idea is to forgive, right? Say the things you need to say. Let them say what they need to say and forgive. This is the process of Ho'oponopono, all right? It's a beautiful process, and we should probably go over that very soon. You can acknowledge the good, or you may have to pay for it with pain. To avoid the pain, acknowledge and reward yourself. Credit the source and acknowledge the universe. Remember that in you, inspiration comes from the universal connection. When you eat, thank the source. Thank the fruit. The world is as we are. There is no difference between you and the universe. To adjust the external world, first adjust the internal world. When you adjust the internal, the external automatically adjusts. What you see is who you are. The people in your life are a barometer of your experience of life. The significant people in your life are a reflection, it's all projection, psychology is all projection, of your internal state. When you give, give with joy. If you give with discomfort or reluctance, you'll get that back as well. So give with joy. The five keys to a happy, unconscious mind. Rhythm, rhyme, repetition, ritual, reward. How we say things. Watch your language. How you say things is important because your subconscious is listening. Remember, you are it. There is nothing external to you. When you make it external and you, you know, judge it or curse it or resent it. When you make it external, you give up your direct contact with the source or essence of it. You give up your power. When something comes to you, it comes to you through the form. It is not the form. The form is only the channel. Say, the power comes to me through this. Instead of form, instead of saying, it's coming to me, my, this paycheck is coming to me from my job, say, the power is coming to me through this. 
She says, God is not him, okay? The business is not the God, right? It, she, he, it's all me. There is no power external to me. So she's reaching out with her consciousness and she's consolidating everything and saying, all of my experience, this is the universe communicating with me. To grow, be willing to pour all your power into serving. To make something so that is not yet so function on an as-if basis. Then it will become so. It doesn't have to be true in order for it to work for you. If you are doing something on a repetitive basis, then it really is true for you. You can't esteem someone else until you esteem yourself. First, integrate all that is inside of you. This is a very important principle in Huna, to have integration, to clean out the lower self and integrate with it. Then we can reflect the higher self, right? It's all there. It's all there. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Stop resisting yourself and make it so inside of you first. The accomplished fact within you will accomplish anything out there. Do you want choice? Then give choice. If you want something, give it first. If you can actualize it within yourself, you're 90% of the way there. Now getting in touch with God. The only thing that stops you from getting in touch with God is because you think you can't. Actualize it within yourself. Become God and you will then be able to be in touch with God. You know, I was just talking with a wonderful yogi and he was saying, you know, I've always been so self-sufficient and I feel, I have felt like when I'm praying, when I'm asking for help, that I'm imposing myself on a higher entity and it just didn't fit well with my personality of self-reliance and self-resilience. It just, it, reaching out didn't feel right to me. And I said, well, you can see it as if it's all in your right brain. It's all a part of you. And so you're asking help from yourself. And here she says it, right? Become God, and then you will be able to be in touch with God. Taino Sans Kumale taught her students a number of basic techniques that were designed to produce results in the non-material metaphysical universe. The basic fire ritual. Take a sheet of paper, write on the page a question about something from which you wish to be free. Why can't I be free of self-sabotage, you might write. Never put a person's name on the paper. Answer the question, free association from your unconscious mind and fill up the paper. Just start writing, just write, 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 write. Doesn't matter what comes out and then as you write, something will come up from inside of you and you'll learn about yourself just from the writing process. Then take a match and burn the paper. It's a fire ritual. Watch it burn, hear the fire, smell the fire, feel that you are burning the obstacles as you practice the ritual. Take the ashes, throw them in the ocean, or any body of water, including your toilet. Just get it, get it rid, of, <laughs> rid of it with some water, okay? Teno, this is the kuhuna we're talking about, advised regularly making an exhaustive list and practicing this in all areas of love, health, material, and self-expression. The basic earth ritual. Be aware of something you want to change or heal in your life. Get a piece of molding clay and knead it. As you do, become one with the clay and then make a shape that represents the issue or problem with the clay. Let your unconscious mind do the work. Free associate and associate the problem into the clay. Look at it when it's done. Then destroy the image. You could also do this with small stones, she says. Get rid of it. Pound the clay out hard. <laughs> and if you're using seashells or stones, just shake them up or rearrange them. Let your unconscious mind do the work unconsciously. So you beat all of your problem into the clay and then you 
beat it out. You just pound it out. And so you're communicating with your unconscious mind as you do that. Immediately reshape the clay and make a new shape that signifies the new desired state or condition. Recreate the clay in a symbol of the new state or condition, how you want it to be. Keep the new shape until the outer world changes. So you keep it as a representation to un remind your unconscious mind what it is that you want. So you're communicating directly with your lower self. It's a wonderful tool. Put the new shape where you can see it every day. The basic water ritual. Rub your hands together seven times and place them on your solar plexus. Hold your hands over a cup of water and let the mana flow into the cup. Say out loud, this cup of water is now filled with mana, the life force to heal somebody, maybe yourself then you or the person can drink it, right? So you're, again, you're communicating with your unconscious mind and you're also tapping into your higher self. So you're saying, this water is filled with energy from my higher self. You can breathe into the cup, fill it with prana. Just breathe your energy into the cup and call on the higher self to pour energy down into you and into the cup. And then state out loud, this cup is filled with mana, with life force to heal so-and-so. Who's it going to be? It's going to be somebody else. It's going to be, be yourself. But you're communicating with your subconscious and you're communicating with the higher self. The kahuna always go down to go up. They always understand I have to communicate with the lower self in order to communicate with the higher self. And that's what this ritual is doing. It's making it clear to the subconscious mind so it can be clear to the higher self as well. Really magical. The candle ritual. Light a candle. Watch the wax drip down. Concentrate on the flame and draw the flame. Draw the energy into you and have the energy of the flame empower your intention for health, love, and so on. Send the energy up to the higher self. And when you're done, do not blow out the candle, but put it out with your fingers. For the kahuna, there was something symbolic about blowing out a candle. They didn't like it. And so they always asked you to snuff it out with your fingers. The basic process for cutting the energy cord with, with somebody else in your life. Cutting the Akka cord to all people and things and freeing yourself from obligations and connections. This is really good to do before a meditation, perhaps. You want to not be connected to the external world and everything in it and all the people and all of the demands on yourself. You're going to temporarily cut those and free yourself momentarily. Visualize the hundreds of cords which are going out from your body, spreading out in all directions. This is quite amazing. We can explain those with NLP and the way that we hold images in our unconscious mind. It's it's just amazing. I could do a whole I could do a whole video. I could do an, I could write a book on that one piece of information. It's crazy. So this is a real thing that is happening in your subconscious. Visualize the hundreds of aka cords which are going out from your body, spreading out in all directions. Picture four large blades of silver white light completely surrounding your body. Start them revolving counterclockwise, cutting all of the connections between you and other people and things in your life. You just cut them all away. Alternatively, you could imagine a flame and you could burn them all away. Just a beautiful, holy white fire cutting all of the cords and cleaning you out and then go and meditate. It's kind of really cool, the, the clarity that you get from this tiny little subconscious exercise. When all was said and done, Teno Sans Kumale remained true to her own Huna beliefs. As she lay dying in the hospital in 1980, she called all her students to her bedside and said, I'm dying. When I go, do not mourn for me. Do not cry. If you weep, it is possible that you could keep me here, and I do not want to stay here. Please let me go. Don't even think of me until much later. Then, when I'm gone, 
do whatever you want. <laughs> that was her that was her instruction and thank goodness she said that because some one of her students gave all of this beautiful encapsulation of Huna to Tad Jane. So I hope that you really love this. I love Huna. It's directly in line with NLP and that's what that's what Tad James really wanted to teach was that this is all real stuff. This is this is teaching you how your subconscious and your higher self, how they fit together, and specifically how your subconscious works. They were very, very good at making little programs for themselves. How can I work with the subconscious mind? And it worked. It worked over and over and over again, and that's why they handed it down from generation to generation to generation. And each family had their own little pieces of knowledge that they had gathered, their own shamanic traditions that they would pass from one kahuna to the next. It's a really, really remarkable tradition, uh, and I love it. So I hope you loved it. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.